Tom Stewart here. I'm with Liz Trotter. This is Sparky. There everybody goes. What's going on? Yeah, we uh, started a second early. Our guest today is Perry Tate. Hey, Perry, how are you today? This this morning. I'm good, thank you. It's yeah, this morning, morning. This so early morning. We're like walking up a blue streak, y'all, before Tom goes live, and we just can't stop. We can't quit talking. We're like talking about really interesting stuff. I'm like, go, we got to go live. That's why we're all still talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're, we're just live. jabbering Sorry. away. Yeah. <laughs> before we get too deep into that, though, we're going to cover our agenda for no, the rest no of the week. Yeah. Obligatory stuff. Um, you guys know what we're doing today. Perry's got a, a presentation for us. And we're going to be doing some brainstorming, and this is going to be – we're going to have a fun time today. Um, who, who do we have tomorrow, Liz? All right, so this is something we've never done before, and I just thought it might be fun. This is a client of mine in Olympia, Washington, and she's a high-end client, a multi-million dollar person, multi-millionaire. I don't know what they're called. Anyway. Well, well, wealthy. They're called wealthy. Yeah, wealthy. Thank you. Uh, she has a very large house, and um, we've cleaned for her. for. Uh, and her, actually, her house is not very large. It's just a very expensive house on the water. And she's got a lot of stuff going on. So um, I thought it would be interesting to find out from her, um, you know, what do high-end clients really care about? What do they want? What do they think about? And you guys can ask your questions. It's a like a mini version of having a, um, oh, shoot, what are those called, Tom? A one-person focus group. Yeah, a one-person focus group. Yep. So I, love group. <laughs> I, I, I love them. And um, I've done a few. They are super illuminating and enlightening. And so I thought we'd bring on Louisa for you guys to chat with. Um, she'll tell you the down and dirty about our company, too. <laughs> Things are not always amazing at American Made, which everybody always thinks it is. But no, not true. All right. So there you go. Okay. And what's up for Thursday? It's a secret, Tom. It's a it's secret. Still- <laughs> yeah. You guys have to stay tuned for that. Yeah, it's a secret. It's going to be good. It's just a secret. So, Perry, what's going on in your world? Life is busy. We've got a bunch of new products under production. So that's what my focus has been is um, – you know, getting the factory rolling with these new, we've got a hand sanitizer product that is like for commercial, which is mostly for the UK market. And then we've got, um, oh, we've got a personal, uh, a little personal, I don't think I've got it here, but anyway, we've got a little personal uh, protection device, which puts out negative ionizers and disinfectant, or like you can use essential oils as a disinfectant. A lot of people are not aware of that, but and essential, essential oils have got different antiviral qualities. FDA hasn't signed off on it because there's not enough tests on it, but it but it's validated scientifically. It's just not okay for somebody to say, hey, use eucalyptus oil or garlic oil or chamomile oil or lavender and it will kill COVID. You can't you can't make those kind of claims, but you can be very sure that they're antiviral and that they've killed influenza. There are test studies that they've done influenza and stuff like that and reduced the risk of it. So we've got a little, little personal device that you can just wear around and we're thinking when people want to go to church, you know, if everybody's wearing something like that, we can blast the church or kids want to go to school or people want to go to trade shows or. So you, you wear it around your neck? Concert. We're actually designing it. Yeah, you just wear it around your neck. Yeah. So that's, we just, we just got to drop the patent and, and then, um, and then we can like, have got that. So that's pretty exciting. Like, like a garlic clove. Doesn't that like keep werewolves away? <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's like, yeah. Man, you can, they're away mosquitoes, right? Those, yeah. those bands Same. on, they keep away. Yeah. They work. Yeah. They do work. So this is kind of a combination of that and negative ions because negative ions are um, negative ions are, are also an oxidizer. So the principle of, of, a, of an envelope shell virus is you need to oxidize that, that, that RNA, you know. So whatever it is that can do that is, is if you put enough of them in the air, like if each device puts out 20 million a second and you put 2,000 people in a church and – I don't have the brain power to work out what 
20 million times 2,000 is, but it's like trillions on, you know, per second. Could you Come put on. hypochloric acid in it? You could, yeah. So you could, you could, because it's got a little dipstick, and you you dip the stick, and then you put it in, and then the fan blows the air past the past whatever it is. So we could put hypochlorous in it as well, and it would it would blow the, uh, it would evaporate the the. It's just oh, like you know, it's the oh, same logic. How often do you have to redip the stick? I don't know. That don't helps. Know. <laughs> but I mean, the idea cool. is like, have you only? I mean, certainly one, not not more than once a day. You know, for sure. Yeah. Like we have this little device running now with with oil, you know, scented oils and stuff like that. It just goes on for days and days. But maybe maybe hypochlorous acid because it's water based might be, um, you know, once a day you just dip the stick. Or we can we're like we'll give them little, you know, tin foil sachets that are pre dipped and stuff like that of different stuff. So yeah, that's I'll that's, that's an exciting product. I'll have gonna, um, I got another one that I'm that I've got. Huh? I want to know how heavy it is if I have to wear it. If I'm going to have to wear oh, it. Oh, ounces. Okay, ounces, awesome. ounces, ounces. Okay. Yeah, really, it's it. only like, it's about the size of your heart, right? Oh, I put okay. it on the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's hollow. It's hollow. It's not solid. It's not like meaty. Okay. okay. <laughs> And I've got another one. Right. I've got another one. We're, we're we're at final final design, and it's called the Iron Dome, right? And it's a it's a again, it's a same logic negative ionizer, but it actually spins in the air, and um and shoots out negative ions and gives you a little little safety zone. So we've got that. We've got fog blaster. We've got the hand sanitizer kit, and then um and then we're doing some other stuff for some other industry. So life is busy, yeah. But this is all innovation, right? It's all sort of coming up. You, you know, you think about something, and that's why I thought I'd share, rather than talking about COVID too much, right? Mm -hmm. Or although, if you, if anybody sort of kind of wants a little bit of a brain fart, um, if you if your if your net worth is greater than five point four five million dollars in the United States, then you on your death you trigger the um, the state um, inherit inheritance tax, yeah. And the UK is the same. So I don't know. <laughs> it's been a good year for the federal government, the state treasury. Because of how horrible is that? <laughs> which people are oh, dying. Look, at, look at poor old New York, right? I mean, that's the, those people all had, had a lot of money, right? And it's, it gets to the old people. I mean, it's a horrible thing, but, um, but it's just like to try and. It's not to say that that's the intention. It's just trying to, you know, just keep busting open the way we think about everything so that we've got different perspectives that say, well, this is, it may not be as it appears, right? It, there may be other benefits that are being weighed up against, you know, losses and costs, you know, because it's, it's all pros and cons, isn't it? How things roll. Horrible. Wow. That's a, that's a concept, <laughs> Perry. <laughs> well, you know me, I, I do, I dig deep, man. When I, when I get into something, I, I go deep to work out what, 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 the, what, what, what's the possibilities? I mean, that's what this this little session we're going to do today is in the same league. Like, it's all about saying, well, what are the possibilities? What have I not thought of? What what else could be happening? What's behind the scenes? What what's the and that's that's where new products come from, you know? Yeah, this is this is this is dangerous, and I probably shouldn't ask, but I'm I'm, I'm dying to find out. You know how how's the news treating the uh, presidential election in your part of the world? I think in my, my part of the world, I don't really know because I don't speak the language of my part of the world. But um, on the global news channels, it's kind of like, whew, you know, maybe everything's going to go back to diplomacy and normalcy and, you know, the, the um, you know, the natural, the natural development of the globe as an, as a, as a, as a oneness, you know, and of course everybody knows there is, you know, these predispositions to one world government. There are these, you know, there are these intentions to sort of simplify life, you know, but, and then if there's two concepts, right, if you've got basically government socialism, which is like China, Russia, which are not really, they're really totally capitalist systems now, but, but they've got a, a, a socialist flavor to them. And then you've got corporate socialism, which is your the intention of the Rockefellers or whatever, whoever they are, you know, whoever they, I don't got no idea who they are, but you know, that 
that's the story we get told. And then their intention is to sort of mechanize the people to be in a socialist system under them rather than under a government, right? So then, then you get this, you know, thing. But, but, but if you go back 30, 40 years, we had, we had two superpowers and then we have one superpower and then it looks like there are going to be two or three in the future with China being one and Russia maybe coming back up again, depending on how much of their oil they can sell to Europe and stuff like that. <laughs> so, but, it, but it's, I mean, everything's got to move, right? And then everybody's got to try and stop it moving and it's, it's complex politics. But the basic tone is maybe, maybe the world can go back to normalcy, you know, rather than being USA centric with, with, with Donald. So you man, you, you own a manufacturing company in China and you export mm. to the United States and, and, you know, mm. other parts of the world as well. Um, the world. Yeah. Some of, some of the policies, I mean, you, you expect, you know, changes with, with a new administration. Will that be a, a positive thing for your business? I think they're going to drop the. I, I imagine that they'll drop the tariff or lower lower the tariff and go back to 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 normal trading. And I think that China would have to drop their tariffs as well. There's a good reason why those tariffs are there. But the real when people think that the that the Chinese paid the tariffs, I mean that's not true because the tariff is is put on the product as it comes into America. It's the importer pays the tariff. So I have a fact. I have a factory in China. I have a warehouse in America. My American company pays the tariff when I import, not my Chinese company when I export. You know, like I pay China China's taxes, I pay America America's taxes. So that that's kind of like being a big misnomer that you know I got all these billions of dollars off China. He didn't. He just put the price up on everything. You know, so and you guys paid it. And yeah, I am a, a I'm a Trump nom I'm a Trumponomics fan. I am the only guy in my city who wore a red shirt on on election night. So you know I'm a Trumponomics <laughs> fan, but I have I have I, I still believe in free healthcare and I believe in free education. I think that those are the two things that that give people a quality of life that governments should be able to fund out of the taxes. You know, so maybe I've got a little socialist tendency in that sense. <laughs> well, we will we will see where it goes. Um, you have a have a have a, a, a model that, that we've talked about that you're going to be sharing with us today. You want to kind of give us an overview mm. of, of what that's going yeah. To so like? the, the 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 principle is to try and you know sort of inspire people on how to take an idea and uh, and to understand that your ideas are imaginations and not to get overly attached to your ideas, but still be committed to fulfilling your ideas. And we've got like we've got a product which is like in our brush range for window cleaning, like it's called the radial rocker. And radial rocker is like 10 times faster than anything existed before we started that process. That process is like six and a half years. It's, it's like an iPhone, right? It's, it's, it's nothing like an iPhone in complexity, but, but it's gone through so many stages from being a kit set to being this and all the problems that, you know, we found that other, you know, people didn't use it the way we planned it to be used or didn't use it with our other products, use it with other products that we didn't expect. And, you know, so there's a, but, but it, but it was an idea that, that I could make window cleaners earn $300 an hour plus, you know, cause window cleaning was the lowest paid service, you know, irregular service industry. Obviously you guys doing, you know, cause I used to sell franchises in the cleaning industry, right? So I know you're made service business really, really well, you know, so, let's, you know, that's, that, the that's, that's the lowest. The economics so, well, of that are I'm digressing, right? right? No, we talk a lot about return on human capital and how, you know, your right. ability to, bail, to, to, to build out a house cleaner in terms of, you know, if you're able to get 40, $50 an hour for a professional house cleaner, in a lot of markets, that's good. Um, That's great money. Yeah. What, what's it look like in the window cleaning industry, and how has some of the technology that you've uh, developed changed that? Well, it used to be a window cleaner would be happy with sixty to seventy-five dollars an hour, and somebody who had a window cleaning company, you know, who'd, who'd leveraged his business, he would be um, maybe he'd be looking for a hundred dollars an hour. But if you go to soft washing, roof washing, pressure washing. You know, those industries, carpet cleaning, those guys were pulling in $300, $400, $500 an hour, right? And I was going, I looked at it because I used to be a window cleaner. And um, and so I looked at it and said, well, there's got to be something that's wrong. So then if you go back to the science of what is efficiency, it's all based on efficiency. And efficiency is based on technique, 
right? I can give you a faster tool, but if you use the old technique, right, then you will not get an increase in efficiency. So if you think about the jackhammer, replace the crowbar. But if you use a jackhammer like a crowbar, you won't have efficiency. The vacuum replace the broom. But if you use the vacuum like a broom, you won't increase your efficiency. The lawnmower replaced the scythe. But if you imagine somebody using a lawnmower like a scythe, he won't increase his efficiency. And the same is with our, our products and our tools. And so, so, you know, if you're going to increase efficiency, it has to be an increase in a, a tool that can change your technique. And then the person has to be trained and actually change their technique, you know, to a faster technique. So you can't use a faster technique on a tool that doesn't work faster, but if you use a slower technique on a tool that works faster, you won't be faster, and so you won't increase your hourly rate. And then there's, then there's you know, what's work? Work is a scientific term. I mean, you can get me going on all this stuff because this is my passion, right? But um, work is a, a scientific term, so it's called force through distance. So if you want to reduce the amount of work that you do, you either reduce the amount of force required in order to achieve the task, or you reduce the distance traveled for the device or your hands or your body in order to achieve the task. So then, you know, if you want to increase the efficiency of somebody, then you have a look at how much force they're using to do what they're doing, right? And that might be where somebody's dragging around a carpet cleaner, uh, a vacuum cleaner versus carrying a vac vacuum, uh, backpack vacuum cleaner. You know, the, the backpack vacuum was a, was a big efficiency changer for, you know, the, the, the servicing the floors regularly, you know? And so, so, and also less force for that person, you know, when they became lighter and more ergonomic and things like that. And then you've got to, you know, look at the distance traveled. So somebody should go into a property who has to clean and really spend the time to map out that property. What is the least amount of steps I need to take? You know, what's the least number of passes? Can I get a, can I get a vacuum? You know, let's say you had a little vacuum that had a little six inch head and you go to a 12 inch head or you go to an 18 inch head, then, you know, you can change the number of passes that it takes as long as you've got the suction power, you know, so everything's got to be matched. The bigger the, bigger the head, the less suction. Well, what are we sucking up? You know, like, do, do we have big things to suck up or little things to suck up? You know, and we have the same in window cleaning. We have, you know, relatively clean windows that are clean monthly, and we have windows that get clean once a year. Well, the brush that you use to clean monthly can be, you know, bigger, lighter than the brush that cleans once a year because you get pounds per square inch, right? So there's, there's so much, there's a lot to study, you know, to become more efficient. I'll take a breath. No, that's 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 awesome, though, because at, at, at the end of the game, for for any of us that are providing services, be it window washing, you know, house washing, mm. house cleaning, it's all about being productive. It's all about generating more output with with with, with labor hour, and some of it's yeah. logistics, from a scheduling standpoint, and a lot of it's methods and tools and finding ways of, yeah. of eliminating the ineffective. Uh, you know, elements of work and, and, and getting more outcomes and, and, and better outcomes and just, just more production and less time. Yep. I mean, one of the things when we had, um, when we were in, when I was selling franchises in the VIP to, in, in Australia, one of the things that we had was a quoting, we had a very efficient quoting system and the quoting system was points based because similar to you, we have different socioeconomic um, um, capabilities for people to pay. Right. So Maryland, you know, is really, really different from, you know, Iowa, you know, as far as, you know, what the average, what the average person, maybe the rich, rich are always rich, but the average person is going to be quite different. So, so it was points based. So we could count the number of points and then multiply it by a dollar factor, which represented the socioeconomic capability of the customer to pay. Right. And then, and, but a lot of what was clever about that, that quoting system was an actual determination how often do I need to do this? So if you had a picture frame that you're going to wipe down, then that, even though you might be servicing the house three times, let's say you're servicing the house three times a week, but you don't need to wipe that frame three times a week. So you might say, well, I'll wipe that frame once a week or once a fortnight. Even if you tell the customer, it doesn't matter. They can say, oh, no, no, that's my, you know, my grandma gave me that. And every time I look at it, I look at it five times a day. I'd love for it to be clean every time you come here. Like, it doesn't matter, right? But on the other side, once you set that up, you don't actually need to clean that frame. Every time you go there, you've just relieved yourself of some work, right? Some force, some distance, yeah? And now you're more efficient for the dollar that you've quoted, and you haven't been dishonest to the customer because you're allowed to tell them that. Yes. Yeah. 
we call, we call those scopes of work and you can have multiple scopes yeah. of work same home and you might be visiting yeah. that on a weekly basis and doing completely different things each time you're there yes you know? yeah like that and in window cleaning we always say that if you clean the window better than what the customer expects then you're doing it for you not for them you know wow. I like, like that. You know, we can be perfectionists, right? Like the average window cleaner is truly a perfectionist, right? But there's a just a point where you go, dude, clean is clean and you're over cleaning for this customer or this price point or whatever, you know. So so you're um you know, that's that's the whatever you do beyond what the customer expects, you're doing for you and not them. They can't appreciate it. I'm writing that down. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I, the reason I love this, Perry, is a lot of times uh, we will, not a lot of times, but periodically we'll get an employee that wants to clean everything. And their thinking is, yeah. well, the customer's paying to have their house clean. We should clean everything. This is my response. Thank you. Yes. Right? Yes. And you mix and you mix that with that scope of work logic and say you can clean everything, but you don't need to clean everything every time you come here because it just doesn't get that dirty, right? So you're not being immoral. And then you have th this is a beautiful person, by the way. This is a really beautiful person to have as an employee who wants to clean everything. Oh yeah. Because they're not a cheater, right? They're actually got a nice integrity and a desire for, for cleanliness, which is exactly what we want. However, to make them affordable. Right, yes. they have to find some efficiencies, and efficiencies take up, you know, what we might call compromises from a per, from a perfectionist point of view. But it's not a compromise at all if it's yeah. well communicated with a customer, and it makes you know just rational sense for, you know, balancing our affordability and our profitability. Yeah, and using this up front before they ever start cleaning—that's the key. So for the cleaner, yeah. for the professional cleaner, you're also setting, or I would be setting their expectation as well. So I, yeah. I love, yeah. That. yeah. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, there's my nugget for the day I'm already. Excited, yeah. Perry. <laughs> so, so Perry, you uh, you have uh, a, a few slides you want to share with us? Yeah, I think um, I think I can do that because this is called ideas, and it's only a few, so I can walk you through. Can you uh, maybe you, you send me the screen? We didn't practice this, did we? You can do this. You down at the bottom. You should have a. Um, a number of options, and one of them would say uh, share screen. Oh, yeah. Sharing screen is easy. Share screen. Have you got my screen? It should be popping up. I don't see it yet. It would come up backstage. So when you click on it, if you've got more than one monitor, it's going to ask you to pick a monitor. No. Oh, there, 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 there. Maybe that. Okay. Yeah, you're you're coming up now. All right. I want to go there. Can you see that? Yes. Ideas. Can you see that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I can't see you now, but I I'm going to imagine that you're there. We can <laughs> we can see you. Screen. We can see you, and we can see your 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 deck. Okay. I won't, I won't pick my nose, okay? I'm, I'm going to remember you're there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, here it goes. <laughs> just a we we, do, just we, fun, we right? see everything, Gary. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so here we go. So this presentation is just to give some sort of inspiration is that we have a lot of ideas. Usually we have them in the shower, right? So, so you know, we get these kind of sparks of... Um, of inspiration. So here's this little, um, what's this called when you have a word that's made up of letters? Acronym. Acronym. There it is. Mm -hmm. So it's an acronym, something which you can re easily remember, you know, and so we're going to go through it from inspiration to design to execution. And then A for associates or affiliates and S for share. And, um, and then I'm going to try and, you know, guide everybody just to try and inspire some sort of process so that people have got some way to place this kind of thing, at least just to remember it, right? So why do we have ideas? Well, our ideas are an expression of ourself, right? They're sort of popping up out of 
our the total sum of all of our experiences, the books we've read, the people we've met, the the experiences that we've had, you know, and in interactions with whatever it is that's our world. So, and then that forms us, and then that basically out pops um, ideas. And education is, you know, a, a, a vehicle to help people have more ideas. So that's why education is so important to our young people, no matter their their wealth status of their parents, because they could be quite brilliant, but they could be suppressed without education to have ideas, right? So our ideas are uh, basically, we have ideas to solve problems. We don't really just have ideas for nothing, right? So there's some, always something that we're trying to think of or something that's just happening in our world that kind of drives it. And so one of the definitions is that we're, kind of problem solvers, which if you have a, a, a Christian foundation, then, you know, um, don't don't consider it um, wrong to see yourself equal to God um, in, that, in that we are meant to be creators and we are meant to be problem solvers. So uh, most people feel best when they solve a problem and they feel worst when they have no control over their life and they can't solve any problems. So they basically become a problem, right? So... This goes, I'll go deep every now and then, right? <laughs> so that was pretty deep. Yeah. <laughs> so if ideas create problems and ideas solve problems, uh, how many ideas can we have, you know? And so you start looking at this and you go, oh my goodness, like that's exactly my life. Like especially those of us who are like kind of on the, on the outside the box kind of, you know, wavelength as, you know, in our, in our nature, you know? So either by by DNA or by you know nature or nurture kind of stuff you know, so there's so many areas which we could have ideas in, and we need to try and work out you know how to do it. So that's what I call us. We're kind of like an idea factory, but it's no use just being an idea factory if all you do is make ideas and you can't make any of your ideas come true. So that's why I kind of call it imagine action. It's not a word that I coined. It's a you know there's other people have used it before, but it is kind of like you have an imagination that turns into action as you have imagine action, right? And um, so this is how do I get this idea that I had, right, to turn into something which is real, right? Um, the upside of, 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 of actually being a problem solver and having ideas that you can turn into reality to, and it, it is this thing called success. But success is, you know, often just construed as financial. And I really think that that's really distorts you know, the, the financial the financial reward should never be the real reward. It should just be a measure of how many other people were affected by what you did as compared to well, how you're affected by what you did. So, you know, you could get recognition. You could get strength of character, achievement, security in yourself. You know, your greatest security is your ability to handle your own insecurity. You know, so just the fact that you can solve problems, just the fact that you can turn something from nothing into something, you know, starts to build your confidence of your ability to survive in the world, you know, on your own, you know, and provide for those that you love and stuff like that. So, and then, you know, you get an enormous amount of optimism the more times you do this and you kind of, you know, some things work and some things don't, but you don't, it doesn't, you do actually get a lot of optimism from it and confidence and innovation and happiness like that, you know? So I think those that gives you, you know, the reason why, you know, if I could encourage people to say, oh, I'm a problem solver and then just own it, right, then uh, then start moving towards it, then it's kind of cool. So let's talk about ideas. Um, well, we had an idea to make a book called Ideas, but we haven't written it yet, but we got the, we got the book to say. <laughs> you got the cover. <laughs> we got the cover, right? But it's still just an idea, right? So, <laughs> but, um, so ideas, what I'm sharing with is a thing procedure it's not uh, it's all happening in your head and the more we understand that most of what's going on in our lives is happening in our head we're actually imagining stuff and we're trying to make imaginations become real and then just on that point is most people have an imagination and then it require other people to understand their imagination which is all happening in the head and you can't get inside another person's head and then start binding people to the reality of the imagination which they created Right. So in other words, boy meets girl, she's she meets his definition of, you know, attractive, you know, in, in whatever levels that that means. And then he creates an imagination what living with her might be like. But he if he doesn't share what that imagination is and she falls short of that, then they break up or vice versa. Right. But but nobody really actually understood that you just imagined that. <laughs> 
<laughs> that that person, you, you know, you can have your later on in life when you start getting some agreements together, and you then you can say, well, even in those agreements, there's there's a whole lot of imaginations that we've made about our partners that we we never shared with them, and then they fall short of our imagination being a reality, and then we start binding them to the imagination that we had that we never shared, you know. So, so it it's very much a, a thinking. Um, <laughs> I'll jump back to this inspiration. So what is an inspiration? Inspiration is that suddenly brilliant mental picture, right? So that's why I always talk about like what you get in the shower because most people get this, you know, in the shower, walking the dog, um, sitting on the la on on the rocking chair, you know, on on the balcony. You know, it's kind of like or usually there's just some some calm moment that has this lightning bolt that sort of pops in, you know, uh, to your to your mind, and then design is is the, 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 the producing of a plan of something before it exists. So if you're copying, you're not designing, right? So you say, oh, I'll see what that guy's doing and I'm gonna, I've got this idea that I'm gonna do what he does or do what she does. That's not design, that's called copy. So it's really important to think that you're, this is your creator energy running, right? So execution is to put the plan into effect. So, so design is producing the plan, execution is putting the plan. And in the first instance, we've got to remember, this is all on imagination. I just had an idea, then I start thinking about, oh, how would I do that idea? And then how would I do the design of the idea? That's what execution is. And then A is for allies, associates, alone. It's, it's basically who else is in this? Who, do, who else do I need in this to make this come true? Right, so who can support my idea, or am I just going to do it on my own? Am I going to be a one-person business? Am I going to build a franchise? Do I need capital? You know, do I need production? You know, all that kind of stuff. And then the last step is share. And the point of share is not when you tell grandma, "Hey, grandma, I've got this idea." Right? It's the point of share is when it's no longer ours. So we got this definition from Steve Jobs, and I have a video here to play him defining what is the share moment, right? So let that go. We're not getting the volume, Perry. Say what? We're not hearing it because you're hearing it in your... Oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so I can tell you what he does. Got it, got it. He basically released the Mac and he said, we had all these ideas, but we just needed to put it out there. And he said, at the moment that we made it, um, it was no longer ours. That's when it belonged to the world. Yeah. And, and so when you have an idea and you share it, it's the time that you actually put it out in the world that you can no longer edit it. You can edit the next version. You can upgrade it and go through the whole process again to make, make it a better product. But, you know, when the iPhone 3 came out, he put out the iPhone 3, you know what I mean? So, okay, later on it becomes the iPhone 12 or whatever, but but each time you put it in the world, each time you make a flyer and you publish your flyer, each time you you know make an offer and you publish your offer, each time you create a service and you deliver your service, that's when it's in that share mode, not when you're, you're not sharing that you have an idea, you're sharing the idea, yeah, the, 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 the product of the idea. How are we going? You following me? Yeah, doing awesome. I'm looking for the Steve Jobs video that you were playing to see if I could find it. And oh, there's a lot of, yeah, jobs. It's, um, a lot of videos of Steve yeah, Jobs. Yeah, it's Steve Jobs on um, it was no longer ours, is probably be the, the phrase. It belong or it belonged to the world. I think that's how he ends it. Yeah, it's super cool. Very, 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 very inspiring that guy. Okay, so I'll jump back into this, right? So ideas is not a linear process. We present it linear so you can actually see the different steps, but actually it looks like this. I have an idea, right? I have this inspiration. I then go into designing it. I then, with my design, I said, oh, I can do this, I can do that, and I can do this, I can do that. And then especially if you share with a spouse or a business partner, that, you know, oh, I've got this inspiration, I've got this idea, I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. So that's my, that's your design, right? And then your partner will go, oh, that won't work, right? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had that. But, uh, yeah. But, but that, 
that won't <laughs> that that won't work is actually coming out of execute it's coming out of the e so you're talking design they're talking execute right and mm -hmm. so once you once you get ideas into your family into your business um like harrison and i we're, we're father and son but we're partners and we when, when we have an altercation over a point we immediately come back to ideas and say am i an id or e right because i'm in and usually it's i'm in d you're in e it's too early to talk e right don't execute yet until i've explained all of my design but but at some point you've got to go into execute like the, which is the execution of the plan will it work, right oh you haven't thought of this and you haven't thought of that it's usually all negative the, the initial imagination of execute Execution. And you've got to remember, this is all an imagination. It's all happening in two people's heads. They, sh the other person hasn't got a clear view of what you, of what your inspiration is. You probably haven't got to deliver the whole story yet before they've gone into execution and told you why it won't work. And then you've got to have a design for each execution. And ultimately, any one of those execution arguments may kill your idea. So then you go back to have another shower, right? You go, oh, I could do this. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go through the thing again and so you're going through you know inspiration design execution inspiration design execution when you get to a certain point you'll go can i do it you know alone can i get affiliates can i get allies can i franchise it can i do whatever and then again the a may not knock it out um and 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 so you you just can't proceed so then you've got to go and have another shower and start all, all over again and wait for another mental spark of brilliance you know and so so as long as we understand that it's non-linear and then this is this is just the idea phase right and it's all an imagination and as as long the more people understand how much of life is an imagination like tomorrow hasn't happened yet we've got no idea who's going to win the election we've got no idea who's going to die of covid we've got no idea whether the vaccine will work or not actually because of their press announcement was so non-scientific pfizer so you know we've got no idea what tomorrow looks like at all right but we have an imagination for it which is our dream and our commitment and we're eternal eternal by nature you know in in the way that we are as a being so we don't just we don't have a bell curve life in our in our aspiration for life. You usually find people who have been really passionate about life are passionate right to the point of their death, even though their death was imminent. You know, so so we're 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 imagination people. We're problem solvers. We're creators. We're looking to make things better and inspire others or whatever. But the thing is that once we've got to the, through the ideas, we've done our inspiration, gone through design, execute. Okay, then we believe we can do it now we actually have to do it so this is the action part and it starts again because now you've actually got to make the design now you've actually got to do the execution now you've actually got to go and talk to the allies and the affiliates and the whatever right and then you've got to put it into the real world and make it a share so it's the action of imagination it's really messy and yet it's very ordered <laughs> You can't see that. So that's the end, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, you have, you know, a lot of innovative tools for, for the cleaning industry that, that you manufacture. This uh, thought process you just shared with us, is that uh, how, I guess it starts off with, yeah. with inspiration. Basically, you must take a lot of showers. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I've got I've got direct sun on my forehead, right? Does that make me look brighter? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Celestial. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to get under I'm, I'm trying to get underneath it, right? <laughs> uh, so, we know somebody um, that um, has a really um, good growing strong business and she does a lot of different types of ideas and does new things a lot. And pretty much every time I talk to her, she's in the bathtub. So does the bathtub work as well as the shower? Classic. <clears throat> oh. nah. Bathtub's definitely great. Yeah, I'll try and get this right. right. Yeah, but bathtub that's is Trish fantastic. That now we know. Yeah. You know, Trish Lake's always in yeah. the bathtub. And I mean, like when you, when, when you look at, um, I gotta adjust myself, sorry. When you look at, um, um, 
when you look at this process, it doesn't stop when you actually put the product out, right? Then you find out everything that's wrong with the product and then you've got to go back and you've got to, you know, you've got to get some sort of spark, like what the hell are they doing with my product that makes it break or makes it not work or what technique are they using that I've never seen before? What Neanderthal is, is you know, bashing, bashing this thing around on a window frame, for example, and then, and then, and then you've got to come up with a new idea, then you've got to design it, then you've got to try executing it. If you can't, if the execution doesn't work, it doesn't matter about the design. So then you've got to go back into the design, then you've got to execute, then you've got to try and get some Neanderthal to test it, but that doesn't happen overnight. So that takes three months. So the whole time you've got these, you know, one percentage of your customer base is going to destroy your product. Another percentage of your customer base is going to treat it like gold and like really care for it as, as they should tools, you know, and, and, and it goes round and around and around and around it again and it never stops. You know, and some processes is like like the radial rocker is six and a half years now, maybe seven years. You know, from from when I first had this idea that I could make a brush that was, you know, really really smart and fast. You know, it's only a brush, <laughs> well, but it's really fast and smart. The last time the last time we talked, we we were talking about this concept and. You know, you, you you brought it to my attention that you live in China and they make a lot of stuff in China and they can make it cheaply. And if we could come up with, you know, an, an, an awesome idea and take it through that process, then, mm. you know, theoretically, you know, we'd have the opportunity to maybe load a container up full of something and bring it back to this country and well, bring it back to the U.S. and do something yeah. cool. Yeah. Bouncing around the idea of uh, like robotic vacuum cleaners, like Roombas, and the idea of having a, a cleaning service where you're you're it's augmented with with robotics, and maybe we're leasing uh, robotic vacuum cleaners to clients, or maybe somebody shows up at the house with with a couple of Roombas under their arm, and you know they're cleaning you know, while the Roombas are doing their thing. Um, is that a, is that something that we could run through an idea process and kind of kind of illustrate? I, I think it's a I think it's a I think it's a brilliant one. I mean, I think that you know, the, I mean, there's two sitting there's two ideas sitting in there. One is you know leasing it and saying, hey, Mister Customer, you know, you don't you don't need me to vacuum your floor. Like I can I can put a, a I can put a person in here who happens to be a robot, you know, and. Uh, and I could have them cleaning the floor, or, you know, pretty much all the time. And I'll come in and inspect their work and make sure that. And I'll come in and, you know, I'll make sure that, that they are, you know, maintained and everything like that. So, you know, you could also go and buy one of these, Mister Customer. But, but, you know, but, but it's probably be better if we just build it into the package. You know, I think that that would be that. So, so if that becomes one side of it, and the other side of it is. So the other idea or inspiration, so before you go into design, is the idea of, you know, actually having a truck full of rumbas <laughs> that every time you turn up at a customer's house, you put the rumbas out first, you know, and they and they start doing that work, and then you collect them and take them with you and recharge them in the truck or whatever, you know, something like that. Oh, see, no, so that was an execute, right? Mm -hmm. So my brain has gone, that won't work. Right, because how do you recharge them enough of them? How many you got to have to be able to carry them all around with you, and then you got to recharge these things, right? So you, if you look at that little flash, that was a flash of you got to recharge them in the truck. Mm -hmm. You got that. So, so that wasn't a design; that was an execute. Yeah. I was talking design. You know, we could do this, and you could do that. Those are your two ideas, right? When design, and then all of a sudden, an execute comes up and says that won't work. The battery's going to run out. You know. <laughs> So, so then if you, we go so back to design it, together. Yeah. So go back to design. Okay? So, yeah, then, so then you go back to design and you got two models to choose from and, and both of them could work. So you don't have to choose one or the other. So then we'd look at, you know, in, in the design of leasing, let's do leasing first. Right. Yeah. So the question is, do they lease the, do they lease the vacuum cleaner under the existing contract? Do you have a contract? Do you use the vacuum to create a contract? You know, like a, a regular payment PayPal subscription or something like that. You know, maybe maybe the people who don't have regular payments, you know, auto deductions, maybe this would validate that, you know, by adding, you know, seven dollars a week, you know, for the for the Roomba or the Roombas, you know. Then so executors come 
come in and said, hang on, how many, how many Roombas are they going to need in their house, right? <laughs> you can't just say $7 a week if they're going to need – it's a two-story house and they've got a baby zone and a dog zone. You know, they're going to need four Roombas, you know. Oh, that's now $28 a week, you know. So, so that won't work. And that's that execution popping in and going, that won't work, right? And you go, but we're all just imagining because there are no Roombas and there is no house. Right? Yeah. Hey, but you've Perry, probably got houses. Um, Kimberly has a good idea. Perry, could you put the diagram up again? The idea diagram? Yeah. Yeah. Which one? Oh, uh, this one. The one oh. that shows like ideas, inspiration, design, execution. With the arrows going back and forth. Oh, okay, okay. So they can screenshot it. Yeah. Well, it would be useful in the discussion because you can kind of see how yeah. well, making well, you get yeah, to the yeah, 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 because the new words, yeah, I get pretty used to them. Yeah, it sounds like execution is where good ideas go to die. <laughs> well, if you but think of the execution, you kind of get the the, <laughs> the the feeling that they're going to die, but actually. It's the, so it's the actual, it's the doingness, right? Yeah. Otherwise, you're an idea yeah. factor. And you can yeah, lose a lot right. of money if you don't do execution. I feel like execution, where they say, well, that won't work, that's actually the growth opportunity. That's like, well, that won't work, so what will? Let's go back to design. Design you go some back more. to being a problem solver. Yeah. You can't so execution execution in, in the first instance. Yeah. Execution in the first instance will point out the problem. Then you solve the problem. Execution in yeah. the second instance, when you actually go to do it, becomes your SOPs, your, um, you know, or, the actual training of your staff, you know, all that stuff sits in that execution. I mean, you design execute, you design inside execution, but the function of design is the, the planning to bring something into existence that did not exist before. That's your really clear definition. I can bring yeah. that up as well, uh, design. Like producing a plan of something before it exists. Yeah. So that's yeah. if you – because sometimes you'll think, oh, am I in design or execution? Design is the plan to make something, and execution is to put that plan into effect. So, so by your definition, if we wanted to – make a vacuum cleaner and vacuum cleaners there's so many of them out there is that really a design effort based on your definition or are we just copying something that's already out there and trying to manufacture yeah the design the design part is the idea of saying i can lease these or i can use these as part of my service that's the design part the execution part is how do we know which one's going to work how do we know which one's better this won't work because that Roombas are too expensive. This won't work because, you know, maybe the cheap ones will fail. Though you remember last time we talked, we actually went through a lot of the, this is the problem, right? This is the problem with this idea is that we don't know which, uh, which vacuum, which robotic vacuum is the right one. And if we bring in a container and they all disaster, then everybody will hate me, everybody will hate you, and we can't have that, right? So, so, so the, 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 the problem solving for the execution of which one to choose, what we thought of last time was, you know, we could set up a panel of respected um, people in your network and we could say, well, we could all buy, you know, two of each, three of each, four of each different, you know, major styles and, and then those people invest in those with the intention of, you know, being part of the profit share, which is, doesn't have to be a big profit share, but just something, nothing for nothing. And then those people could be part of that um, to do the evaluation together. And they could swap them if, if everybody says, this is fantastic, you want three people to say it's fantastic and all before you get a go ahead. And that's all, that, that, that was a design of execution, right? You want a panel, you want a board, how do you vote? How do you confirm that one person's opinion is the same as another person's continue, can thing? What kind of business are they? You know, are they a business which is near the beach, which is pulling up sand? Are they a business up, up in, you know, you know, Michigan, which has got carpet, and this guy down in Florida has got tiles? And well, which one is which one's the best? You know. So is so that those, are, those were all execution points, right? So that whole evaluation process, is that all execution or is it kind of revolving from execution back to design, back to execution, kind Correct. of an iterative? Iter iterative. Also, also I, 
too. I also hear the inspiration again, because now we kind of have to come up with it. We got to solve another problem, right? So it's I D E yeah. inspiration, design, execution. Oh, back to inspiration, design, execution. Yep. yep, I, yep. I see right. just keep floating through them until you yeah. get to E and there's no, yeah, but. And there's no so, blockage. Yeah. So no who problem. else do I need in there? Like, so then you'll go, okay, it's a great idea. A is a is allies who who can support my idea so then you're going to put your team together let's say we go ahead with it right you put your team together who's on this panel who's going to invest it because they'll have to put the money up for those machines that they may or may not like but they may or they may be able to share you know the dude with the carpet might be able to say i don't like this one but he sends it to the guy in florida who puts it on tiles and he says it's fantastic but somebody's got to take that risk so who's which kind of people have we got in our network who would be prepared to do that in order to have a small profit share on a on a on a container of these units that could support the industry crew you know so you go through that whole ide process until you find something that works and every time you find a problem you have to go back and work that problem i love the idea that you know we're it's, it's kind of in our dna as as human beings to solve problems and as long as we're solving the problems, that's almost like gratification and kind of, you know, keeps the ideas flowing. And it's, I guess when you get to problems that you can't solve is when it stops being fun, right? Yeah. Well, what's the saying about an idle, an idle person or an idle brain? There's an a, idle mind. There's a, uh, there's a scripture. Of the devil or something like that, or did I get that wrong? <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty close to right, right? Yeah. yeah the, the, anyway, idle, idle brains with no problems yeah. to solve become pro they start making problems. So, eh, you never do this, and you never do that, and you never do this, and you never do that. And, eh, like so, that's a person who's got no problems to solve, and so they're making problems. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with this person? What's wrong with that person? Right? And then they'll go, oh, you know, they break you down, and then say, oh, it's okay, darling. Like, you know, let's do this, and blah blah blah, and they start trying to f solve your problem that they just created that you didn't even know you had before. And you were just being you. <laughs> so, an idle mind is the devil's playground, or you know. There you um, go. Yeah. yeah, they become problem makers, right? You become a pro because you are a problem solver. You can't get out of that, right? So, if you haven't got a problem to solve, you make a problem to solve. So everybody else, you know, this person's got a problem, or that, you know, you didn't, you, 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 you don't do the toothpaste right. I mean, that's classic one, right? Just mm -hmm. making a problem, like, do you, is this really make any difference? But it's a problem for you, right? So now that's the problem. Okay, darling, how do we sort this out? How would you like me to squeeze the toothpaste and push the lid? And do I lick the thing or do I do I wipe it with a tissue? Am I allowed to use tissue or can I use a microfiber? If we use a microfiber, do we throw it away or do we put it in, in the washing machine? You know, like... How do we solve this problem? You know, and how many times when you're in a situation like that, you know, be it with a customer or anything else, in the back of your mind, you're thinking this person has no problems. If this is if this is the problem, well, this person has no problems. This this is the beauty of of advancing, you know, with things like ideas, right? So once you get a model of thought that you can start popping this kind of event experience into, you can start. Co you know, you become a better coach, a better, a better, a, a wiser person, you know, so you can go, oh, this person's gone into execution or, oh, this person doesn't have a problem. Like, you know, <laughs> like, I'll give you a problem off, right? Oh, what's that? Like, do we need to take you to the doctor? You know, no, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> so, that part's not <laughs> no, we're not doing that. And I'm I'm completely nonviolent. So for for a nonviolent person, it's kind of like Irish making jokes about the Irish and nonviolent people making violent jokes. I mean, I've, been, I've I think I've only I've only been in two fights in my whole life, right? So, but it's kind of funny, you know. So, so, but you know, so we get to you get to be more empathetic to the person where they're at, and then more able to more able to isolate them, you know. And then on the other side, you know. Don't don't throw your pearls before swine, right? So kind of like you know, once you understand something, you can if if they, if you try and share this and they don't get it, then just let go because you can't, you know, if they're not if they just want to have be in that state, then that's you know you're better to move them out of your life and just stay with people who are moving forward, you know, in my opinion. Okay. Well, sometimes you'll be with a good person though that 
that um, typically has lots of great ideas, willing to move forward, etc. But for some reason, this one idea is just like, yeah, no, not, not, yeah. not really willing well, to and, listen. And to that's her. completely okay as well. I think that's a great point because Tarasen and I have yeah. an agreement that if we can't get through to, if we can't get through to agreeing to do it, we yeah. just say, well, it was only an idea anyway. Like I'm not, we're not overly attached to any of our ideas because they're only imaginations, right? So I can let go of an imagination if I know it's an imagination. But if I think it's me and you're rejecting me, right, mm -hmm. then I'm going to get more attached to it the more you reject it. Yeah, good point. And, and yeah. I guess, you know, I'm seeing uh, like a funnel in each one of these steps you know, things can fall out. I mean, you might go back to an earlier step and get going through, but you're going to have a ton of ideas and very few of them are going to make it all the way to, you know, execution and, you know, actually getting, getting associates involved. And, you know, I guess to the point, if it's such a grand idea that you're actually sharing it, it's not yours anymore, it belongs to the world. That's got to be a rare occurrence, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's great because we're we're an idea factory, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you imagine, you know, it's like it's like the dude, it's like the dude who's never had a girlfriend, and then one girl winks at him and he goes, Oh my god, she likes me. And then he pursues her. It's the only girl he's ever pursued. It's the only girl that's ever winked at him. And then she goes, Oh sorry, I have a boyfriend and like his whole world falls apart because he's kind of fallen in love with an imagination of this girl who actually might have liked him, you know, compared to the dude who's just, you know, is able to go up and talk to as many, this is, you know, good old, you know, the days of, you know, heterosexual dating and stuff like that, where it's just like the norm. So I'm talking inside the stereotypical norm that pre-existed the current norm, if we're allowed to. And then, you know, so he goes up and, you know, talks to a bunch of girls and he's any one of them could become his friend. Any of the, one of them could, he could date and any one of them could be his future wife if he wanted a wife, you know? So, so, you know, if you've got abundance, you've, you've got freedom. If you've got scarcity, you've got problems, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. So abundance of ideas is great. You know, Yeah. <laughs> don't just have one idea and get all stuck on it. At the, at the same time, though, you know, it, it, it can be a burden or at least a responsibility because, you know, life for, for some people, you know, life can be really simple if, you've, if you if you have fewer options. You, know, you don't have to worry about not, you know, choosing the right path or, you know, I, I, I kind of I joke that sometimes when you have too many options, too many ideas, you know, that, that, that creates Maybe I mean, it's good, but you know that's not without a cost as well, right? Sure, but if you, you know, if you choose, you know, so there's a bunch of sayings on that: the person who chooses the road of mediocrity never tastes success nor failure, but they never really live the full dimension of of human life, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you if you don't want to take risk, you don't want to be an if you don't want to be an innovator. If you and, and some people are not very innovative, but some people can share with somebody something or improve this or just be better. And it's not all to do with business. It is. It could be the way they raise their children. It could be the way they communicate. It could be the way they help them do homework. It could be how they support their kids do hobbies. You know, it's not. It's nothing to do with money and business. But in our context, we're talking money and business. But the intention is these things here, recognition, strength, achievement, security, optimism, confidence, happiness. You know, those are the things that, that you're trying to pursue. And if you take a road of mediocrity, path of simplicity, it's really a resignation from life, I believe. Like from, from, the, from the full potential of life. And you're allowed to do that. It's not my problem. Let me just see um, Hunter... Hunter S. Thompson, this guy. If you look up, uh, see. he's got a quote which is just unbelievable. Harry, you've been throwing out the great quotes this whole hour. <laughs> I guess if you take an FLSD, a good quote will come to you every once in a while, right? 
I just got to jump in the shower. Yeah. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> no, All right, Hunter head. S. Thompson. I got it. Hunter S. Thompson. Now I've got to go skidding. Wow. I think it's skidding wow. Maybe I can pull it up with skidding wow. Oh, yeah, here it is. Here it is here. All right, so I'll read you this. Life should not be a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving safely in a pretty well-preserved body, but rather to skid in a broadside in a cloud of smoke, thoroughly used up, totally worn out, and loudly proclaiming, wow! Huh. Ah, yeah, I've seen that a few times. Mm. I love that. I think that is it, right? But those are, I mean, look, a lot of people have a really boring life for 80 years, and some people have a really exciting life for 56 years. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the people, if not all of the people... I'll around. give you... I'll. I'll give I'll give you an example. Okay. That guy died at fifty six years old. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He was. That's just, uh, what was the comic strip? Doonesbury used to play a parody off of him, right? That was he was one of the characters that the cartoon Doonesbury was crafted around. Oh really? Mm hmm. <laughs> um, it was pretty unique. You know, most but, of the most of, most of, if not all of our audience on this show, are small business owners. So just by the fact that out of all of the ideas that they had, you know, they basically created the idea or developed the idea of starting a small business and ran it through that process. So. Um, definitely, yeah. definitely nobody here looking uh, to pursue the path of least resistance. Well, he, what he did, what he did early was get these associates. They got that money. That guy who came around to their garage, right in Palo Alto or where they were, right. The dude, the investor, and they gave him a million dollars. So that that made a lot of difference right there, is getting that backing for the model which they had. But it was interesting, just yesterday, my son said to me, he said, look, I know we've always based ourselves, you know, being inspired and by Apple, but did you realize that Apple don't make any of their own products? They're all made by Foxconn and there's two or three companies here which make all of the Apple products. Maybe there's a couple of things made in America, you know, and but probably not by Apple. And Samsung makes the screen and this company makes the, the, the Gorilla Glass and that company makes the, uh, uh, I think ARM are making the, the their chips now, you know. So, and, and I said, ah, good point, because we make everything that we sell pretty much. But I said, but there was a time where Apple did make everything. Yeah. Right? So it's just an evolution. There's an evolution where you can't be all things, right? So you've got to be, you've got to be able to use more people, other people. So that, and that, and that's, that's the whole thing is this ideas is not, lin it, it looks linear, but it's actually not linear. It's, 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 right. it's ever, ever per pervasive in every every aspect of your life on every part of the day you're going through these kinds of you know processes well okay, you're top of the hour i hate that i hate that <laughs> um, harry as always thank you uh this was a, this was a fun ride today um yeah. great this is my, my pleasure you know, I, I think as entrepreneurs, we sometimes it, it, it's good to just take a step back from the nuts and bolts mechanics of the things that are most pressing in our business and stretch our minds a little bit and mm. learn to think differently. And this is definitely one of those exercises. And I, I appreciate it. And our audience does as well. Yeah. 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 Great. Great. Yeah, it was uh, something I like sharing it. Today. Yeah. Well, yeah, I like sharing it because it's it's and it's a, it's a language that we made up, me and my son. So, you know, it's not something you can find in a book somewhere unless I write that book. You know, but uh. we're waiting. Well, yeah, you know, it's you, 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 we hear it's coming, so we're we're looking forward to that book. Okay, well, uh, yeah, that's right. We'll hope to promote it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, let us know yeah, when you get to that, one. that S stage. Yeah, I've got to stop. I got to stop doing other stuff, right? Then I can. Stop. Harrison says. Can you just stop and you know write your book? And I go, well, we've still got other things to do. So, 
I'm still cracking along. No, you know? no don't stop that other stuff because I really want that <laughs> thing that I'm gonna wear. Yeah, yeah, that, really that's like going into production. Yeah. In the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got some All good right. things coming. So we gotta go. Tom. All right, yeah, yeah. Go. you go and close yeah. out. Thank you. Uh, you know, keep us posted. You get to a point where you got some time, you want to come back. You know, we'd love to have you anytime. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll pop in tomorrow, 7 o'clock Eastern. Bye-bye, guys. Bye, y'all. Bye, guys.